Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is my last lecture on the topic of bacterial infections. And uh, let's proceed to the today's lecture. The first disease I am going to discuss is brucellosis. Many of the diseases which I am going to discuss today, they are not primarily dermatological infections, but they are the systemic infections in which skin is involved, either in a form of a rash or some oral findings or some nodule or ulceration. So um, the disease has to be taken in as a whole and uh, sometimes the dermatological manifestations are a clue and sometimes they are not a clue for the diagnosis. So brucellosis is also known as the underland fever or Mediterranean fever or Malta fever. Uh, brucella, which is the causative organism, is a gram-negative bacteria that is responsible for zoonotic infection, which is brucellosis. The disease is widespread among cattle and sheep, goat and pigs, and the uh, bacteria involved are mainly brucella abortus, brucella melitensis, and brucella suis. The last one is for the pigs. Any age is affected and both genders are involved. The humans are infected by the ingestion of contaminated milk or the milk products or by direct contact with infected animals. The incidence is therefore highest among the veterinary surgeons and the farmers. Organism is a gram-negative aerobic cocobacillus, colonizes the cells of reticuloendothelial system and induces a granulomatous tissue response. Incubation period is a little long, 5 to 30 days, and the disease starts with headache, backache, and generalized malaise, which is accompanied by the onset of intermittent fever. Other symptoms include the gastrointestinal or nervous, lymph nodes, spleen and liver are enlarged, skin lesions are not pathognomic, but if they occur, they are morbelliform, scarlentiniform, or roseolar exanthem. EM-like nodules may be seen on the legs. So this is the morbelliform eruption of brucellosis. Contact with secretions of infected animal give rise to pruritus, erythema, and wheeling, followed within 48 hours by profuse fine follicular papules, many of which become vesicular or pustular and heal in 10 to 14 days, leaving small scars. The course of brucellosis is variable. The illness, the illness lasts for three to four months, but both acute fulminating and extremely chronic forms occur. Investigations. A specific agglutinins in a titer of over 1 to 100 must be regarded as suspicious and 1 in 300 as diagnostic. Positive blood cultures may sometimes be obtained. PCR-based methods are increasingly being used to diagnose brucellosis nowadays. Management. The recommendation is a course of doxycycline and rifampicin. Both should be given for six weeks. Cotrimoxazole is an alternate. Other alternates include streptomycin and other tetracyclines. Other drugs like ciprofloxacin is active in vitro against brucellosis, but its clinical role is not yet fully evaluated. Now, Bartonella. It is originally classified the Bartonella is originally classified as a uh, rickettsi, but now it is regarded as a separate genera 
and a separate uh, bacteria. There are many human diseases which are associated with these organisms. And the diseases include trench fever due to Bartonella quintana, bacillary angiomatosis, which is purely a dermatological condition. This is caused by Bartonella hanselli, Bartonella quintana, cat scratch disease, Bartonella hanselli, and Oriah fever, Bartonella bacilli formis. All these organisms cause vascular proliferation which are known to stimulate the production of vascular endothelial growth factors and angiopoietin 2 in the host cells, which results in vascular proliferation. Trench fever. Trench fever is caused by Bartonella quintana and is transmitted to humans by body louse. So it is uh, usually a disease of poor and underprivileged community with lack of proper hygiene and seen in many countries. There is no known animal reservoir and appear to spread from person to person. The incubation period is five to 38 days and present as a recurrent febrile illness. The rash is a maculopapular eruption, most prominent on trunk, which fluctuates with the fever. Comes with the fever, goes when the fever subsides. The illness is mild and spontaneous recovery is the root. Now, the second disease is the cat scratch disease. This is due to Bartonella hanselli. The syndrome is characterized by development of peripheral lymphadenopathy after a cat scratch or a cat bite. Disease has a worldwide distribution, common in autumn and winter, affect all ages, but mostly children and teenagers are affected, both genders. In many cases, it is believed that the cat is the source of organism and wound is the portal of entry. The cat is usually young but not ill, and diagnosis, diagnosis is easily missed in mild cases. After three to five days of the inoculation, a papule may form which progress through the vesicular and crusting stage in two to three days, and then ulcerate. The lesion may be inconspicuous or may take several weeks to regress often leaving superficial scar. About half, are on, half of the lesions are on hands and arm and one quarter on head and neck. The constitutional symptoms are mild, but fever may present in 60% of the cases. So these are the two nodules. Lymphadenopathy is the characteristic feature and is present in all cases and usually develop within one to two weeks of the initial papule. The affected node is in the draining pathway of the primary lesion, but there is no lymphaginitis, lymphangitis. Uncommonly bilateral lymphadenopathy is seen. Glands are painful and tender and occasionally progress to separation and discharge before regressing in periods of weeks or months. So the differential diagnosis is all the conditions that are associated with nodules along with draining lymphadenopathy. And these conditions include sporotrichosis, primary tuberculosis, atypical mycobacterium, lymphogranuloma venarium, pyogenic adenitis, Lymphoma or sarcoidosis must be excluded as both are associated with bilateral and symmetrical lymph adenopathies. Complications and comorbidities. Rarely there may be systemic involvement associated with arthritis, osteolytic lesions, intra-abdominal or intrathoracic lymph adenopathy, encephalopathy, myelitis, cerebral arthritis, 
pneumonia and granulomatous infection of liver and spleen. On lymph node biopsy, large number of bacilli are seen and Wharton starry silver stain is the stain used to highlight, highlight them. Otherwise, histology is not specific and biopsy is not routinely recommended. In the management, value of antibiotics is debatable. However, azithromycin is the antibiotic recommended. Fluctuant glands may be aspirated, but should not be incised as chronic draining sinuses may develop. Bacillary angiomatosis. Bacillary angiomatosis was uncommon until it started developing with AIDS patients and this disease then came in the limelight. It is also seen in severe immunocompromised individuals and is characterized by development of friable angiomatous papules and nodules. The appearance of lesions follow septicemia, which is usually mild and passes unnoticed. Any age and both genders are affected. Bartonella hanseli and Bartolena contana are the causative organisms. The reservoirs are cats and humans. Later, bacterium is probably transmitted by body laus. The reservoirs are cats and humans. The later, the, in the later, bacterium is probably transmitted by the body louse. There is no known difference between the skin infection caused by the two species of Bartonella. The, uh, the bacillary angiomatosis appears as multiple papules and nodules with angiomatous looks. Red, bright red color is diagnostic. The lesions of bacillary angiomatosis is uh, usually in crops and very rare solitary. Most superficial lesions closely resemble pyogenic granulomas. They can involve any site, including the mucosal surfaces. Local lymphadenopathy is common, and the commonest differential diagnoses are Kaposi sarcoma and pyogenic granuloma. The disease, the skin lesions remain if patients do not receive the treatment. This is the histological appearance, and there is dense nodular capillary proliferation, very much look like pyogenic granuloma. The endothelial cells are swollen. Conspicuous neutrophils are evident. Organisms are easily identified when Wharton starry silver stains are used. The black color are the organisms. But investigation. On biopsy, there is a lobular proliferation of small blood vessels that contain swollen endothelial cells, as I have shown you in the histopathological slide. These endothelial cells contain granular material, which consists of clumps of bacteria that are highlighted by water and starry stain. Cultures are technically difficult. PCR is now increasingly used. Management is with this doxycycline or erythromycin. It is necessary to give them for a long period of time, maybe eight weeks or longer, and relapses are common. Next disease is Oriah fever or Veruga peruna. Oriah fever is an infectious disease, disease that is transmitted by sand flies of the genus Lutzomia. The Lutzomia is a sand fly which is found in the New World, and bacteria are introduced into the bloodstream through the insect bite. The organism is rod shaped. Uh, Coco bacillus bartonella bacilliformis. Uh, it's a rare disease that presents with febrile illness, followed by appearance of multiple small red 
skin papules, the Veruca peruana. Uh, peruana. The disease is endemic in Peru and Latin American countries. Most affected individuals are young child and once they acquire the infection, they acquire a permanent immunity. Both genders are affected. Incubation period is from two to six weeks. Two forms of infections are is recognized, the Oraya fever and Veruga peruana. The first stage or Oraya fever is characterized by sudden onset fever, rapidly progressive hemolytic anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, and generalized lymphadenopathy. In this condition, there is petechial, petechial or ecumotic, ecumotic rash and mortality is high. Veruga peruana developed without previous oraya fever or may follow it after weeks or months. Characterized by crops of erythematous papules or nodules that are hematogenous and hemorrhagic, most numerous on face, neck and limbs and also involve the mucous membrane. Lesion persists for months or years, and the characteristic of the disease is presence of lesions in various stages of evolution. So these are the hematogenous lesions uh, of uh, Veruca peruana. They are very similar to bacillary angiomatosis, However, the bacillary angiomatosis occur in immunosuppressed individual, and this is an endemic infection seen only in Latin America. Complication and comorbidities is the hemolytic anemia, disease course and prognosis. Oraya fever is potentially fatal with high fatality. Verrucous lesion generally settles spontaneously over time. The diagnosis should be considered only if patient has visited the endemic area. Veruga peruana must be distinguished from yaws, acquired hemangioma, and Kaposi sarcoma. The biopsy appearances show lesions contain numerous small blood vessels with endothelial proliferation, almost similar to the biopsy appearance of bacillary angiomatosis. And again, bacillary, Bartonella bacilli formus is seen in the cytoplasm of endothelial cells. Management. All febrile cases should receive antibiotic. Antibiotic of choice in oraya fever is chloramphenicol 2 gram per day for a week. And uh, as this, this is treatment of choice because oraya fever co commonly coexists with salmonella. But Bartonella bacilliformis itself responds to ciprofloxacillin, penicillin, doxycycline, and streptomycin. The response of antibiotic and Veruca peruana is unsatisfactory. Most lesions evolve and eventually settle uninfluenced by the treatment. Tropical ulcer. The tropical ulcer is a synergistic bacterial infection that follow invasion of skin by at least two organelles, one of which is fusobacterium ulcerans, and other include a spirochete. It is common throughout the hot and humid tropical region. The disease is described in countries from sub-Saharan Africa, India and Pakistan, Southeast Asia and West Pacific region. Commonest in children, no gender difference, Malnutrition and overcrowding is predisposing factor. The, while the reservoir of fusobacterium ulcerans is not known, it is isolated from mud and stagnant water in endemic areas. Most tropical ulcer develop at the site of potential trauma, a scratch, cut, or insect bite. Therefore, commonest over the lower leg and on the unshoed foot. Ulcer is slightly indurated edge, which may be undermined. Important feature is rapid breakdown of pre-ulcerative papule to tropical ulcer. The floor of ulcer is covered with foul smelling, 
grayish purulent slough. Pain is usual and there may be fever and constitutional symptoms, but no regional adenitis. This is a tropical ulcer. The rapid evolution of the ulcer is characteristic. And other characteristic is a special type of population, poor community, endemic location, etc. The mainstay of diagnosis is the rapid onset of lesion and clustering of cases in a locality. In endemic area, the main differential is jaws, leishmaniasis, ectima, and mycobacterial ulcers. Management. Rest, elevation of limb, adequate diet, penicillins, metronidazole, combined bland lo local application, a plaster boot, early graft, is all that is required in the treatment and management of this disease. So the next disease is endemic syphilis or the basal. Endemic syphilis is a rare disease that is caused by Trypanoma pallidum subspecies uh, endemicum. It occurs predominantly in southern border of Sahara Desert and part of the Middle East. It is presumed to be spread by a non-sexual contact. Its logical features and serological reactions are identical to those which are seen in a venereal syphilis. Primary lesion, a papule or ulcer usually in the mouth. Secondary lesion, similar to venereal syphilis, include a mucus patch, generalized papular or macular rash, condylometa lata, generalized lymphadenopathy. Untreated secondary lesions last for six to nine months. Tertiary stage, characterized by gameta of nasopharynx, resulting in destruction of the nose known as the gangosa. Gametous lesions in the skin, periotic periostitis, and bony gameta. Management, the investigation and treatment is similar to that conducted for venereal syphilis, and it responds to pentavalent penicillin and azithromycin. Yaws. Yaws is caused by Treponema pallidum subspecies pertinium. Endemic in uh, mainly, it's uh, an endemic disease, and uh, it is listed among the neglected tropical diseases by 